Hey, sports fans, PB and Z Sports Chaos. PB, speaking of chaos, the baseball playoffs, I don't know if it's chaos yet, but it's interesting, right? I mean, last night you had the Guardians coming back from a two-run deficit 20 years to the night when Dave Poppy, Big Poppy, David Ortiz beat the Yankees in the 2004 series when we were down 0-2. He hit the home run in that game in extra innings. Sox went in to win in a sweep. Will the Yankees be cursed once again? I don't know. We actually, we were down 3 0 when that happened. That's right. Yeah, 3 0. That's right. We were down 3 0. So, so yeah, this yeah, one. 20 years. So it was 3 0. That's right. 20 years right. ago, 3 0. The big home and run. And now they're, they were down, they were down, the Indians were down 2 0. But yeah. that could be, that could be a turn. You never know with baseball. That could be the turning point of the series. I mean, look what happened with the Dodgers and the Mets. The Mets won their first game, and Dodgers have won three straight since. And I personally think they're going to win their fourth straight and take that series in five. But yeah, yeah, I'm with you as well. I'm with you. The Dodgers are showing up. And by the way, Mookie finally got out of a slump. Mookie's. I I know Otani is the is the guy, right? To me, Mookie's the catalyst. I, that's why I picked him to the beginning of the year. The MVP he might have been if he didn't get hurt. And yeah. Mookie's a catalyst, and he's heating up now. He's got three home runs in the series, right? So he's heating up. Yep. And I wouldn't count the Guardians out just yet either, because that to that to your point earlier, that could be like a turning point for the series. Yeah, and we all we we've been saying, oh yeah, the Yankees don't have a bullpen, right? So you get to a bullpen game, which happened last night, they end up losing. So we'll see. All right, let's talk some football because you know how we love football here. We got college football. By the way, last week, a big one: Oregon beat Ohio State in the three versus two game. They move up to number two. Um, so that's a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the other yeah. big deal, sneaky big deal. We're not going to talk about it much in this. We don't have any preview of it. But Army Navy is still undefeated for the first time since 1950. This late in the year, Army and Navy are undefeated, which means the 12-14 Army Navy game could have a lot of um, implications, right? Yeah, I wonder if one of those teams could sneak into the college playoff now that there's oh, that 12 teams. Real. That would be but, Hey, um, last week too, we we had good weeks. Uh, you and I both went three and one. Um, and and you know what? I picked the winners of all four games, but I had Penn State over USC. Penn State was, I think, favored by four and a half, and they only won by three. So, and that was your one win. And then I think you had um you had a different team. I can't remember which one it was, but you went three and one and I went through one. But still good weeks, right? Against the spread. Yeah. 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 By the way, this week is this is gonna be a challenge. We're picking some Challenging games here, fans. Yeah, they're Technology out. has ready for this one. We're gonna help to try to make you make money. We get number seven, Bama. Alabama goes to Tennessee, who's number eleven. By the way, they played two years ago in Tennessee, and the rankings were somewhat similar. And Tennessee had that huge upset. What do you think of this game? Yeah, and what's the line on that? Is a field goal? Or... This is a three-point game, Bama. Yeah. The by the way, Bama has not lost two games before November since 2007. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I'm going to take Bama. I mean, as much as I think it's very tempting when you have a Tennessee team that's playing as well as they are, they're also at home and they're underdogs. So it's a very, very tempting three points to take. Um, but I did once, I usually never bet against Bama. I did it once early this year and it got me. So this is the one time I'm not going to do it again. So I'm going to stick with Bama and I'm going to lay the three on the road. I know it's a risky pick, but I think that's the better team right now. I, you know what? I wish this was the LSU game where it was only two and a half. It would be much easier to pick Bama. I am going to pick Bama with you. I'm very nervous about it, but I'm picking Bama. I think they win the game. I don't know if they cover, but I'm going to pick them anyways. What right. you and got G Money has Tennessee. He might be the smart man on this one. Yeah, right. I know. I know. It's risky. The big game of the week. The big game. This is for the SEC, um, you know, probably favorite in the SEC title game. Number five, Georgia on the road to number one, Texas. By the way, Georgia has not lost two games before November, I believe, since 2014. Kirby Smart goes for the fastest 100 wins in SEC history if he wins this game. Texas beat my Sooners last week in a blowout. What do you think? 
Yeah. And I, and I didn't get sucked into those points like you and G money did. I think that was the other, actually the other game that you lost last week was taking the points with. Um, yes. That's what it was. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's so tempting to take the points, especially against solid squads. I mean, Oklahoma was a solid, you know, top 15 team when they played them. George is a solid squad as well. So I think this is another one of those point traps. I, I just look at it and say, it, it's, it seems like the easy pick. Let's just take Georgia with the points. Right. Um, but Texas, man, they look good. I mean, they look like national champions good. And for that reason, I'm going to take the Longhorns. I'll lay the five. What does G Money have before I give my pick? G Money actually went the other way. He's got Georgia. All right. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm taking Georgia not to cover. I'm taking Georgia to win the game outright. I do wow. not believe the Longhorns are that good. Trust me. Especially with uh, Quinn Ewers playing quarterback. Now, if Manning was starting, I'd be a little bit nervous on this pick, but he's not. Quinn Ewers is going to start. Sarkeesian, he might start sniffing alcohol or whatever he's going to do again at halftime. I got Texas to lose. Georgia wins this game and covers, in my opinion. All right. That's a good one. All I'm, right. alone. I'm alone on that one. Another LSU game. This one is very tricky. So, L I mean, another SEC game. I'm sorry. LSU goes on the road. They're a two and a half point favorite on the road. They go to Arkansas. Arkansas already has a top 10 win this year against a conference opponent as an um, lower ranked team and, and as an underdog. I'm very concerned about this game. What do you think? I am too. And I, I'm kind of riding the same theory on every one of my picks here. It's so tempting to just take those points at home with Arkansas. Um, LSU showed some resiliency last week, though, in that game. Yeah. Um, was, it Ole Miss? was it Ole Miss, right? Yeah. Um, did they play at, at home? Um, granted, it was at home. It was a night game. There was a lot of energy going on. Yeah, in that yeah you're right. Yep. And, and they're not going to have that here. So, that, again, that's why it makes it very tempting to just take the points with Arkansas. But I'm not going to do it. Well, don't gonna, forget, LSU's the favorite, two and a half point favorite. Right. That's what I mean. I, I, it's tempting to take the to two and a half with, with Arkansas. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. But I'm just, I'm not going to do it though. I'm going to lay the points. I'm going to take the two, lay the two and a half. I think LSU can win, pull this one out, even if it's by three points. So I'm going with Tigers. Where's your, where's G, uh, G Money going? G Money, we've been opposite on all three so far because he's going the other way on this one. He's taking Arkansas. Oh. If you want, if you want LSU, I was going to go Arkansas, but I'm going LSU as well then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the All last right. one. I don't know how to read this team. Michigan, no 24 in the country, three and a half point favorite. They go to Illinois, who's now in the rankings at number 22, three and a half point favorite for Michigan. I, I'm really not sure what to do. I believe Michigan's a better team. I'm not. I don't. I didn't know how Illinois got to the top 25, but they did good for them. What do you think? Yeah, and, and G-Money is taking Illinois in this one. I just haven't seen enough out of that team to make me want to pick them. In Michigan, the only thing against Michigan that I have is their inconsistencies. They come out and play really, really good one week. The other week, they look a little flat. Um, if they go on the road and play a flat game, they're probably going to end up losing this one. But I just don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to continue to carry some momentum into this game. They're going to show that Illinois really probably doesn't deserve to be a, a top-ranked team. That's um, why and, I'm picking Michigan as well. I don't think I'm, they're a top 25 school. Illinois. Yeah, and, I, and I'm taking Michigan as well. So you and I are pretty much, I mean, the only one that you and I are different on is that, uh, is the LSU. No, I'm yeah. sorry. Is the Texas Georgia game. Georgia, Georgia. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm opposite on G money on all four picks, which by the way, last time that happened, I went 0 and 4 and G money went 4 and 0. So who knows what's going to happen here. Uh, I did make up for it last week, though, with my three and one ranking. So, by the way, disappointing game last night on um, college football. BC lost to Virginia Tech, forty-two to twenty-one, and a kid from Virginia Tech, if I can say his name right, Bastool Tootin, ran for two sixty-six and four touchdowns. He was a BC commit. He was sold, signed, delivered until January twenty twenty-three, and he left and went to L, um, Virginia Tech. Last year was his freshman year there. He could have been ours. BC lost. And by the way, my boy, Thomas Castellanos, I loved him. But I think that finally the glass slipper has broke for Cinderella. He does not look good right now. So I hate to say it. All right, let's go NFL. Let's go. A lot of shit happened in the NFL this past week. We had some big games last week. Cowboys got absolutely croaked. 
by um, Detroit. Detroit. We had Drake playing for the Patriots. The Drake showed up, played pretty well, much to – we were surprised. We thought he should have sat on the bench, had three touchdowns off the returnovers. Um, Jets mm, lost, but they made a big acquisition. What's the biggest news of this week going into this, uh, to these games for you that just happened last week? Yeah, I mean, it has to be. It has to be the Jets' acquisition of Devontae Adams and the reuniting of him and Rodgers together in New York. I mean, I think that's a – it's got to be an obvious one. I know there was a big to do about Peyton going back to New Orleans last night in that game, but uh, I think this Adams reuniting with with Rogers is really the the the. Uh, oh, let me ask you a question, BB. Is that a bigger deal than the Bills getting finally a number one receiver in Omari Cooper? In my opinion. Yeah, yeah, because I don't think Cooper will be the number one receiver. I really don't. Really? I don't think he will be. Yeah, I think he's still going to go to Shakir. I think will be his his number one guy. Okay. Um, I know he. I know he spreads the ball. He's got a lot of options there at receivers. He's got the rookie Coleman, who he doesn't target that much, but he he's a pretty electric receiver. Um, I, I just don't see Cooper sliding in and just being an automatic wide receiver one in that in that wide receiver room. I'm sorry, I just don't see it. Um, but it's eventually, all that not, not even eventually, like after three games. I don't know. I'm not there. I'm not there. And maybe it's just because of everything he's gone through in Cleveland. But the, the one thing I can tell you is that Bills, from a uh, if you look at it from a business perspective, the Bills' acquisition of Cooper is way better than the Jets' acquisition of Adams. Like they Money. they're all, Money they're all in on this. Ton of money. I mean, we they got Cooper on the cheap. So uh, the Bills are a smarter move for the Bills. And I don't think Cooper needs to be that number one guy. As long as he comes in, plays a role, make moves the moves the chains, makes plays when he needs to make plays, it's gonna be good for the Bills. I have one theory about Cooper going to the Bills, and this that is this. He is a very precise route runner, route, route runner, maybe one of the best route runners in the league. I don't think Josh Allen is the most accurate quarterback in the league by any means. I think he's got a gun, but he's not accurate. So is it a detriment that Omari is a precise guy and J Josh is a gunslinger? And that, and that's, that kind of validates my point where I'm not sure if they're going to connect and be oh, – after many weeks, maybe it changes come playoff time or something like that, but – Okay. Um, that's why I still think he's got other guys he's going to rely on. Plus, let's not forget the fact that he's got Dalton Kincaid is not obviously wide receiver, but one of his pass catchers that he goes to. I a love lot. Dalton. I love Kincaid. Yeah. And if hey, Cook, and if, Cook is, if Cook is healthy, he goes he goes to Cook a lot too. That's true. Out of, out of by the way, Drake May did he did he impress you? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Does he deserve he, to play the rest of the season? In your opinion? I mean, he should. He's talent. He's a talented kid. I mean, he doesn't have the resources right now around him to to really shine and be, be that. But I think he's a top half quarterback in this league. Um, and okay. he'll prove that as he goes in. We do, I mean, think about what he's dealing with right now and how well he's still doing despite the crappy offensive line and a mediocre wide receiver room. So I was very, I was very, very impressed. I was not expecting it, and he, he showed so that. I know he had three turnovers. But once he's had to loosen up, he showed me some stuff. So, all right. The last thing before we make picks, Cowboys, they're in a lot, whole lot of trouble. They obviously, they got all these injuries on defense. But I got to say, I think the biggest problem with the Cowboys is Jerry Jones as the GM. Would you agree? Yeah, just because he's stubborn. You know, he's stubborn and he doesn't. I don't, I think he has his own best interest at heart versus the team's best interest at heart. And it's starting to catch up with them. You know, he's starting to get like Bill Belichick sy syndrome, you know, when Belichick was down in his final years, it's like his yeah. ego yeah. got in the way of what was best for the team. And I think that's happening with Jerry Jones. I, I agree with you hundred percent. All right, let's make some picks. You got your dolphins going out to the Indianapolis Colts. With Joe Flacco, the miracle man, at for 39, 40, doesn't practice anymore. He's got, like, I think he has a cane or something like that, but he still throws 300-odd games. What do you think? Yeah, and then this team's two and three. And the funny thing is if they win this week, they're a three and three team, and they could be, you know, pushing for the, you know, back in the race for the division for when Tua comes back. But 
I don't know if that's going to happen. They've looked, I mean, the only team they've beaten since two has gone down has been the Patriots in, in that game where we thought the Patriots should have won on that last play. Right. But yeah. um, they're not a good team. They're just not good. Their defense isn't looking good. Their offense is looking lethargic without two of there, even though they have some good, you know, playmakers around him. If a chain, we don't know if he's healthy or not. Um, but hopefully he plays. He's got a clear concussion protocol. He should. And then you got Tiger Kill and Wall. I mean, you got playmakers around. You would think that a quarterback could come in like a like a Huntley, like he did in Baltimore, and yeah. still win games because of the talent around him. But it's yeah. not happening. It's not, for whatever reason, it's not happening. So I, I just going on the road, Indy, Indy. I, the other thing with Anthony Richardson coming back this week, right? So Flacco's not. Is playing. he going to play though? I think he's going to play. I think he's going to start on Flacco. Ooh, I, I don't like that. That I that's don't either. Me. I don't either. Oh, I don't either. My and, I got Andy going into this game, but if you're telling me Stevens playing and it's not going to be Flacco, I'm oh, Richard well. Not not, be- not to mention that Jonathan Taylor may not play either, which means Trey Sermon's your lead back, and in Goodson will be mixed in a little bit there too. So there's a lot of things going against Indy here. Um, this could be the game that Miami sneaks and pulls off somehow, but I just can't, I just can't find it in my bones to take them right now. I'm going right. to stick with Indy. This could be the game the Dolphins kind of break out though, but. By the way, is this a testimonial to Tua, the fact that the Dolphins, who a lot of people had as a potential two, Super Bowl team are right there in the, in the championship yeah. game. They've gone in the toilet since Tua got hurt. Is this a testimonial to his uh, you know, talent and skill and what he brings to that team? Yeah, yeah, I really do. I, yeah, I, I really so. do. I yeah. think so too. All right, but I'm going. Gonna, I'm going Indy. Are you going? Uh, G money goes Indy as well. Yeah, you okay. are too. Yeah, I am. All right. All right. Here's the one. This is a big one in the NFC. Houston. I'll go. No, it does not. Um, Houston's the AFC. Houston, uh, Green Bay. Uh, what do you think of this game? It's two young quarterbacks who are you know starting to show this stuff. Obviously, Stroud last year was the uh, rookie of the year. Jordan Love is proving to be the right guy for Green Bay. What do you think of this game? Yeah, and um, you know, Jaden Reed just cleared um, his designation, his injury de- designation. He's going to be healthy. Um, Reed's showing that he's a top, you know, top five wide receiver in this league. I think, and he's only getting better, and he's developing a better connection with with Love. Um, not to mention, Love has another set of weapons around him. Uh, in Green Bay, Green Bay is looking good, man. I, I think Green Bay, Detroit right now would be a amazing NFC Championship game. Like, and I know I'll pay. Hey, what about Minnesota? Just that whole division, and the Bears are playing well, right? That whole yeah, division yeah. right now is just yep. amazing. They're fun. Every team in that division is fun to watch. Right, right. Um, Houston. Mixon looked really good last week, coming back off that injury. He, he did. Miss a beat. He did. Didn't miss a beat. Um, it's going to be a shootout. I think this game is going to be high scoring. It's going to be a shootout. But because it's, it's in Green Bay, I'm just going to give the nod to them. I know it's a low point spread. I think it's like two and a half or something. But I think Green Bay wins it. Where's G-Money going? G-Money, I think, is going um, Green Bay as well. Let me just double check that. Yeah, he is. Yep. Here's the wild card in this game. He showed me a lot against the pass last week. Will Anderson is taken right off where he left off from being the rookie of the year, defensive player. He's about to be the next LT, I think. He goes off. Jordan Love can't handle him, nor can the offensive line. Houston wins this game. Wow, interesting pick. And, hey, remember, beginning of the year, I did pick Will Anderson as defensive player of the year. You did, so yes. That could be your – And he was, he was awesome last week against the Pats. All right, Lions-Vikes, the big game in the NFC – this yes. might be for NFC supremacy right now, right? It is. It it is. If Detroit does beat the Vikings, they become the number one seed in yep. the NFC. So um, it is for supremacy in, 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 in the words you used. Um, and it's at Minnesota, right? Um, but I think Detroit has a, this chip. I, I just love Dan Campbell. I think Dan Campbell is just an amazing coach. I think he's a great motivator. I think he knows how to rally his troops. Um, despite what happened last week with, with Hutchinson, that was a terrible loss. Terrible huge, loss. Huge, huge loss, yes. Right. And that, that could factor into games like this, right? Um, but you know what? 
And, and, and you're talking about two, two quarterbacks that aren't like, they're not like these elite. Like when you talk about Goff and Sam Donald, you're not talking about guys like Mahomes and, and Josh Allen. And yep. you know what I mean? It's, it, yep. it's, it's like, a, it's like that next tier, if you will. Um, I, I, th- I think Detroit's going to go in and upset them in, oh. in, in, at home. So I'm going to give this game to Detroit. And I'm sure G Money does because he loves the Lions. He is taking Detroit as well. You going the other way? I'm going Vikings, man. I'm going Vikings. I, I, you know what, Kevin, uh, I forget O'Connell, Con, whatever his name is, the quarterback, uh, the coach. He's a quarterback whisperer. He takes Sam Donald, who everybody could not turn around, and made him into the stud that he was predicted to be out of USC. Until they lose, I'm going Vikings. Okay, I like it. And the next game, I'm going to be the same way as well. KC goes to San Fran. What do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to just use the words you just used to describe the Vikings. Until they lose, I'm taking Kansas City. Like, they, to me, if you keep putting this game on our pick six for the week, I'm just taking Kansas City every single time. Like, I just don't pick against them. Right? Until someone beats them. And by the way, San Fran is not playing well at all. Right? So, even though their offense is picking up the defense, which is supposed to be elite, which was supposed to carry them, is not elite right now. Right? Yep. And that game could be a shootout as well. G Money, by the way, has San Francisco in that game. I'm not surprised. <laughs> the G, uh, who we got? The Jets going against uh, Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. We think Russell Wilson might start. We don't know. Is he that is. yeah? He has. He he will be the starter this week. Okay. The Jets get Aaron Rodgers, and he's got his boy Devontae Adams. They just came off a loss to Buffalo last week. What do you think? Yeah, and I think that that's a big kick in the butt for for the Jets that lost last week. Um, they kind of let that game get away. They 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 could have there were t- opportunities that they could have won it. They made a couple field goals. They could have won that game. Um, and they're two and four, so they're kind of in a must win situation. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, and 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 I think they're the more talented team. And now you add Devontae to that mix. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh started three and zero. They lost two in a row. They played the yep. lowly Raiders last week that yep. pretty much, you know, could be classified as one of the bottom three or four teams in the NFL right now. Yep. So that's not like a victory for them. So I think, you know, and, and you think Pittsburgh, it's in Pittsburgh and the Jets got to go there. I just think the Jets got a better squad and I, I, I'm going to take the Jets in this one. I believe the Red Jets have a better squad, a better talent as well. What I'm concerned about is I don't know about the coaching yet. I'm not sure they buy in with the new guy either. I know Nathaniel Hackett has been demoted, but he's still in the background. They should have just fired him at the end of the day. Devontae has to still gel. He hasn't played with Aaron in three years. At the end of the day, although the Russell Wilson thing concerns me, but you can always put Justin back in in a minute. I'm going Pittsburgh. Wow. Okay, me and G-Money both have the Jets in that one. Okay. All right, the last one. I believe this is the Monday night game. We get the Ravens with the Bucks. I'm going to tell you right now, I really, really want to pick the Bucks. Baker is playing out of his mind. I love to see the Oklahoma kid playing well. He's got a great cast of offensive weapons. But Baltimore has woke up. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing. I, I'm in the same boat as you. I mean, Baltimore has won four straight since starting 0-2. And they've beaten good teams. Um, but Tampa, man, they to your point, they're looking really solid right now. They yeah, I think they win and, the I think they win and, the South. Yeah, and 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 right, it's gonna be them in Atlanta, I think, down the strat. Atlanta yeah, Nolly's beat, proved they're out of the picture. Yeah, yeah. And but Atlanta, did Atlanta beat Tampa Bay once already this year? I think did they play? They did, they, they, they did, yeah. At Atlanta, so we get the flip yeah. game coming up later on. Yeah, but I'll tell you. That game last week against New Orleans where they put up 51 points, man, they were just like – I know New Orleans is starting to slide a bit, so that might not be a good metric But don't forget to New use, Orleans but... came back, took the lead in the second quarter, and they were up by, I think, two touchdowns or maybe three. Tampa had a rally in the second half, which they did, so there you go, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's in Tampa. And, and the other thing is Baltimore's defense is not really doing – that well and especially their yep. you know run defense and, and their pass defense True. too i mean really across the board and i think the way tampa bay's playing i think they can chew up they can chew them up a little bit so i'm taking tampa bay in this one oh, and, and so and, and, okay. and so and so is g money 
You, you know what? It's probably a good pick, but I got to go with the Ravens at this point in time just because I always pick the Ravens. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is a chance for me to catch on you because you're 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 26 and 10, I think, so far on the year, which is amazing. Um, and I think I'm three games back of you. I think I'm 23 and 13 or something, whatever, whatever the math works out. But um, but yeah, with, with as many different picks we have this week, this is my opportunity to get get, get back up by you. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. All right, man. I'll talk to you. Have a good night. All right. See you.